At first glance, Pickle Creek seems much like any other burbling Missouri Ozark stream. But this particular stretch in Hahn State Park has its own dedicated trail for a reason. It flows through a designated natural area featuring some unusual geology. Let's take a closer look. A gentle walk through open woodlands changes as the hillsides steepen, the trail becomes rougher and rockier, and the stream begins to tumble over rocky waterfalls. These angular boulders consist of some very old Precambrian igneous and metamorphic rocks. These are uncommon in most of Missouri, which is dominated by sedimentary rocks. In this example of a granite, you can see large interlocking crystals formed where they cooled from a molten state. Elsewhere you can find veins of other darker igneous material cutting across the original rock. There are multiple kinds of these rocks in this area, including a rare, for Missouri at least, metamorphic gneiss. But distinguishing them can be difficult for the untrained eye, and it's not really relevant for our purposes in this video. Instead, we're just going to use the common geologic term basement rocks for all such ancient Precambrian material. See below for links to more detailed descriptions if you're interested. These basement rocks are often fractured along parallel planes called joints, which can result in isolated rounded forms as the rocks weather away more quickly along the joints. This is most famously seen at Elephant Rocks State Park, but you can see a similar pattern developing here. Jointing can also be seen here in the creek bed where you can clearly identify two sets of nearly perpendicular joints. In this example, you can see how one set of joints helped create a clear conduit for water flow. The Pickle Creek Trail itself is pretty short, and mostly stays within the basement rock area. But to really appreciate why the area's geology is so interesting, you need to go a bit farther by using a short portion of the much longer Whispering Pine Trail to loop back to the parking area. This climbs above Pickle Creek onto a ridge capped by a very different rock type. The basement rocks are hundreds of millions of years older than the overlying layer of sedimentary rocks, a unit called the Lamont Sandstone. A geologic map like this shows where different bedrock types appear at the surface. Here the darker red indicates small pockets of basement rock, including along Pickle Creek. If you pay close attention to the rocks along the trail as you climb the ridge, you can recognize when you leave the basement rocks behind and enter the overlying sedimentary zone. Although these sandstones may look superficially similar to the basement rocks below, here are three ways to tell the difference. First, the sandstones tend to form clearly horizontal ledges based on the flat bedding planes on which the sediment was originally deposited. This is very different from the more uniform nature of the basement rocks. Second, you can easily find sand and pebbles in clearly defined layers. Notice how these are independent, rounded grains cemented together rather than crystals fully grown together as you'd find in basement rocks. Third, look for the presence of crossbedding, an angular feature distinct in some sandstones. Here you can see a set of angled but parallel planes contained within a single horizontal layer. These are formed when consistent air or water currents form sand into ripples, with new layers being deposited on the downstream side of the ripple. So not only does this help you identify the rock as sandstone, you can even determine which way the water was flowing hundreds of millions of years ago. Here's another example. So now we've recognized the basement rocks down along the creek and the sandstone up along the ridge. But how do they relate to one another? Here's where things get really neat. The contact between the basement rocks and the Lamont sandstone represents an erosional surface, where the old basement rocks were being worn away by wind and water, with sediments being deposited on top. In fact, the Lamont sandstone is partly made up of material eroded right from the underlying rocks. And this is one reason why there are so many coarse fragments and layers of pebbles and ripples near the contact. In relatively modern times, as the sedimentary rocks eroded away, creek valleys cut down and eventually exposed the basement rocks below. In the Ozarks, basement rock exposures like this tend to concentrate creek valleys into narrower, steeper gorges because the rock is so much harder and erosion resistant than the overlying sedimentary rocks. These are known locally as shut-ins, with the most famous being Johnson's Shut-ins State Park. Here you can clearly see how a wide valley, underlain by sedimentary rocks, suddenly becomes much narrower and deeper when the creek, flowing from lower right to upper left, hits basement rock. Now look at the similar pattern along Pickle Creek, where again a wider open valley upstream suddenly becomes much more constrained when the creek enters a pocket of basement rock. But that's not the whole story. There's something else unusual going on along Pickle Creek. This terrain model shows the Pickle Creek Trail following the valley and the Whispering Pines return loop following the bridge above. And here's a rough outline of where the basement rock appears at the surface. 
keep in mind that everything else here is sandstone. As the creek flows from right to left, it naturally cuts down into the underlying basement rock. But notice how the basement rock contact with the overlying sandstone is far from horizontal. From creek level upstream, it actually climbs pretty high up the side of the ridge, which rises about 200 feet above the valley floor, then plummets back down to creek level downstream before vanishing entirely near the parking area. You can check this for yourself by looking in the creek at the bridge connecting the parking area and the Whispering Pines Trail, where the bedrock clearly forms distinctive sandstone shelves. If the basement rock were flat, we'd expect it to form the valley floor consistently all the way downstream, like this. And in fact, you do see a pattern like this in Jonco Creek just to the north. But instead, down here at Pickle Creek, we see this isolated pocket of basement rock along with several others further upstream that also don't follow the existing topography formed by the creek. So what's going on? This is what's known as paleotopography, the trace of an ancient landscape. The old landscape of basement rock being eroded away wasn't flat. It was likely quite uneven and hilly in places, and these high points were gradually covered over by sediments before they could be fully eroded away. So when more recent erosion cut down through the sandstone, it uncovered the old landscape in unpredictable ways that don't consistently follow modern topographic lines. In other words, the old paleo landscape underneath Jonka Creek may have been relatively flat, but that under Pickle Creek was likely relatively hilly, so the basement rock exposures are isolated and don't follow the modern topography. So here, you can now recognize how there are wide sandstone-based valleys both upstream and downstream of the Pickle Creek shut-in, which probably exists because an old hilltop of harder basement rock is poking up through the overlying sandstone. There's so much to look for and appreciate in the geology of the Pickle Creek Trail, but don't forget to pay attention to biology too. Rock type can influence plant communities, as can season and many other factors. On this May visit, we enjoyed the colorful palette of blooming wildflowers, ladies slipper orchids, azaleas, and so much more. The more you pay attention to, the more you'll get out of your hike. In summer, listen for interesting birds like the pine warbler, or along the creek, the Louisiana water thrush. Check out the links below for our plant and bird observations documented in iNaturalist and eBird. Can you recognize the different rock types and how they influence the landscape in biology? The Pickle Creek Trail itself is short, about three quarters of a mile. Though if you loop back on the Whispering Pines Trail, the distance will total about two miles. This loop took us about two and a half hours, but we were moving slowly and doing a lot of geologizing, botanizing, and birding. You can also head further upstream along the Whispering Pines Trail to explore even more of Pickle Creek Natural Area, but we'll leave that for you to discover.